Hi guys and welcome to the channel. If you're new here, welcome. And if you are returning, thank you. I appreciate your support, you guys. We're getting ready to do Sagittarius's reading. Um, I haven't put out a couple readings for a couple days because this energy has been whew, just that tough love energy. I'm feeling it. Uh, so we're going to do the bowl and then we're going to get into Sagittarius's reading. The ninth house is where we're at. So let's go down to the bowl and then I'll start the reading after that. You will be able to skip over this because I will timestamp it in the description. Okay, guys. You spirit for your guidance protection and unconditional love i'm grateful for all known and unknown seen and unseen divine energy guiding allowing and protecting us as we receive these messages with an open heart and mind i pray these messages of healing and protection reach those who need them and those who will fully embrace and express their own divine energy for the highest and most loving good as we walk on the path of love healing and redemption may your healing light touch taint and transmute all darkness with your understanding, acceptance, and faith in the holy light of love. Amen. Thank you, Spirit. More to love. All right. Okay. So let's get to pulling some cards. Now I am using this Terra Animal Oracle and I've been trying to read um, the definitions for these because there is four different sections to each of these cards. And since these are general, wow, one right away, guys, the hawk. Messages. This is where you're at right now. Receiving messages or giving messages. There may be a need to communicate something. Um, always with messages, I feel like this could be spiritual messages um, coming in for you or, you know, being open to receiving them. We'll get more. Some kind of messages here with the hawk. I always feel that with higher up messages. Where you desire to go here. Revelry. This is, you know, joy, happiness, revelry. Um... Let's see, what's this first step? The otter. There has been, I know, on where I'm at, and energetically, and everybody's at a different place in their path, you guys, but I've been getting a lot of messages. Getting a lot of messages about, um, I always start getting, like, a theme of messages, like, before I actually know what they're, about or where it's leading me. Um, I think that's just kind of life in general if we, um, and then we got creativity. It could be um, being guided and that's what I'm feeling with the messages to maybe um, do something here that makes you happy, that is creative. And there's something here um, that you need to utilize your creativity for. Um, you could be this could be anything. This could be a hobby. This could be just something. I know I I've, I ordered a couple new books. And whenever I do that, um, and it's all about, like, been getting into, like, the rays of light. And it's like, I visit, I describe it kind of as, like, 
um, throughout this process, I've had like little workshops on like different parts of this. This is um, something you continuously learn about when you figure out everything is connected. That means there's always something new to learn. Um, that's um, your strong point here. Strain, and it was um, reverse. So strain, you know, you could be feeling pretty relaxed for the most part. And this could be because you're doing something here that's creative or there could be some kind of messages or communication um, coming through that's offering you some lighter, more joyful times here coming in. Um, the first step is creativity. So being creative, being open-minded. Um, in the weak spot or the soft spot is opportunity. So um, being really open to messages right now is what I'm getting right away with that being the um, be open to messages um, or opportunities that you may... You may not, um, you may even see them as maybe too much, uh, like this could be stressful or this is just one more thing to add to my plate, but there could be something here coming in you guys for you that is, brings happiness and brings like more of, more creativity from you. This could be messages around other people. It could be like your, like, it could be like a get together or something. And it's like, oh, I don't want to do that or something because I'm already like, I'm in a relaxed state. I don't want to give myself like anxiety doing this or getting this or going there or whatever this is, you guys. But there's an opportunity here and whatever this is opportunity is that you may be not open to um, with it being in the, the soft spot here. Um, could bring a lot of happiness and it's it's going to um, have you be moving forward in a more creative way. If you've been feeling like a lack of creativity or a lack of spark, you could be getting guided to maybe order a new book or something, you know, like I have um, go down another um, path of study or another path of um, connecting stuff, which always brings out that spark it, it brings in that fire it gets us lit up it gets us excited when we learn something new or we find a new connection um so i am getting that um let's go ahead and start by reading this messages with the hawk okay loud and clear have you seen something hard or have you seen something hurt something or felt something yeah and this is um it's like something's either and it's it's kind of crazy because i ordered these books on like chakras and body healing and stuff back they should be coming sometime hopefully this this week but i've i've dabbled in this you know i've i got like tuning forks and sound bowls and you know i really believe in the sound of music and the sound um that it can create that sounds create healing or they can even disturb us too you know so there could be something that you're just being guided to learn more about um seek more of um and it's leading you into a, a, a it's, you want to be happier. You want to be more joyful. So there is an opportunity here, something maybe that will bring you that joy. This could be a self-help books. This could be studying something new. This could be um, a new hobby or something like that. Maybe a new club or group, um, anything like that, you guys. It's clearly, um, it's kind of hard sometimes to listen to those messages when they come in. Like when I got, I'm like, oh no, I'm trying not to, you know, buy anything new and, and but I'm like, nope, this is, it wouldn't leave, like, leave me be. And um, now I'm finding out why. It's because I'm getting all these other messages about these, um, are the rays, the divine rays, the seven divine rays and all this. So it's all going to tie in. Um, maybe I'll talk more about that as I learn more about that. Um, but that, you know, I've already dabbled with the angels and their rays. And now I'm learning more about like the individual um, soul ray at like the, this whole purpose and stuff. It's a lot, you guys. Um, it's a lot, but, and it can be, and it can feel overwhelming sometimes, but if you just take it step by step, um, you know, buy that book you've been wanting to buy or write that story you've been wanting to write or go to that club or that group you've been wanting to go to, there could be something here strongly guiding you to listen, to move you forward. And it's going to lead you into a place that's, um, lighter, happier, um, and the first step is to be creative here. So it could be requiring that you creatively think about this, like um, think outside the box kind of thing. Um, it says you can't, it says yeah, if you felt something that struck you as important, but you can't quite pinpoint why it's because it's going to come in later for you, you guys. That's why, that's what these messages are that we get from um, spirit. We are guided to 
before we even know what it's about, we're guided to already start doing the work. The energy is there before the manifestation. So um, maybe you had a dream, saw an animal that caught your eye, or noticed a reoccurring number. Whatever it is, if something grabs your notice, reflect on it. The hawk is known around the world for its loud screech. This bird screeches for many reasons, but most often it cries out to communicate where they are and what they want. The hawk screeches out to you when there is something that is trying to come through to you. Pay attention and the light bulb may go off. There is definitely some thing you need to um, just listen to, pay attention for those signs, those um, those guides, um, the guidance coming in, maybe guiding you in a direction that's more, um, feels like a creative, funner direction, something fun or something um, more lighthearted. Um, but you may also, because you are in a trying to relax here, and this is good, um, it's like it, you can feel maybe this opportunity or this message or this sign, it's like you may look by it thinking it's going to, like there could be stress or something involved in it. And it's like, no, I'm trying not to stress here. I'm trying not to um, strain myself. It, that would be too much. Maybe Maybe it would be a strain on your... You know, it's like with me and what ordering the books, it's like, oh, that might, you know, but when you're guided, spirit provides. So um, as, if you're worried about that 20 bucks for that book or that $50 for that class or um, whatever it is, you guys, there's something here maybe you need to invest in that you may not see the opportunity in at right away. Like, why am I doing this or why do I, why is this something calling to me? Because there's a, there's a bigger purpose for it. Okay. Um, but we don't always see that in the moment. Sometimes we question, sometimes it's, it's good to be mindful of what you're spending, what the time you're spending doing stuff, stuff like that. You know, everything in moderation, you guys. But it says whatever it is, if it grabs your notice, reflect on it. Think about it. Is this coming because I'm, you know, sometimes we'll, you know, eat or we'll shop or we'll do something like that to make ourselves feel better. But if we're being guided out of nowhere and there's no reason, like crutchy reasons why we would be being led in that direction, um, it's a clear sign that um, you're being prepared for more um, knowledge, more wisdom, just more insight on whatever it is that Spirit's trying to show you. Tearing into it. The hawk doesn't, this is the next section, you guys, and one of these sections may resonate, resonate or all of them. It just depends on where you're at, but I'm going to read them all so that you know um, more, you'll know what rings true. That was loud and clear. Um, tearing into it. The hawk doesn't provide its prey a swift death. These birds are known for subduing their catch with large talons and slowly plucking and tearing into their mill. Know what is coming before you are in its clutches. Know what is coming before you are in its clutches. Stay on top of signs being sent to you as well as the messages you are sending to others. Are you unnecessarily subduing your prey? Is there a message <clears throat> that you're trying to send to someone, but you aren't as direct as you could be? When we refrain from being transparent with others, we are still sending subtle, indirect messages. We are always saying what we are thinking, and if we don't use words, we default to other methods. Instead of conveying vague signals, tear into what's on your mind and say what you want to say. It could be something you want to express here, an opportunity to express something. Um, maybe it's you are not wanting to cause... Um, any more strain on a situation or something like that, and you're avoiding um, avoiding conflict. Um, this has been a message too. It's like sometimes um, we got to speak what we got to speak, but it's also saying not saying things, being mindful of what you're saying, how you're communicating, um, or if there's something you want to do or speak, not to drag it out. That's another message in this paragraph. Um, say what you're thinking. Don't just send vibes. Um, don't just send like evil stink eye or even good vibes. This could be something really good you want to say because revelry is here. So that's, it's something that could bring more peace and happiness and um, joy. So this isn't feeling like um, bad. It's feeling like good. It's feeling like this is good. Um, and then message received is the next section. I guess it's three sections. The hawk sees color better than we do. Their sharp vision lets them hone in on prey. They are a sign to you to use all your instincts and open your eyes to see the whole spectrum. What messages are others sending to you? Um, catching those messages, catching those signs, catching those synchronicities. Some either you could be receiving messages from others or your guides receiving messages, or you could be wanting to 
relay messages. This is definitely about communication. Um, but there, there feels like um, there needs to be some creative action taken on the communication, whatever that is. If this is spiritual communication, be open and alert and make sure you're seeing between um, like the black and white guys, you know, the, the solid and the unsolid. Like make sure you're looking at all the different things that are coming in for you right now. Um, it says messages are sent with a specific goal and recipient in mind. It is more than just what someone says. Messages are found in how someone says something, their body language and their overall actions. Or someone's words not matching up with the messages they are sending to you? Consider that your actions and words are sending mixed messages to others. The hawk urges you to use the full capacity of your keen vision to see all the colors as they really are. Not looking at something this way or that way. See everything as it is and... Um, that's another message. So, and that's not, this is more feeling like the loud and clear um, to me, but um, we will get more into that. It says, give me a sign, hit me baby one more time. And that's a quote out of Britney Spears, baby one more time. The ecosystem to this card is uh, the bat and the squirrel. Messages are read from a place of intuition. We can't decipher them with logic alone. They can leave us feeling a certain way that we can't describe with objective reason. This prey tells you that your intuition is a critical component of reading the messages in your life at this time. That's what I'm getting. There's something coming through subtly. Um, it's not just, it's not plain and clear. You're going to have to use your intuition to see where, what it's guiding you to or what it's trying to show you. Um, this could come through person. This could come through spirit. However, that is, you guys, it says the squirrel, when our energy becomes sporadic, we lose the ability to focus on the big moments. There could be something here big, an opportunity here that you aren't seeing or you're rejecting um, that could offer some peace, some tranquility, some happiness, some joy, revelry. Revelry is a good thing, um, and that's what you want. So there's, you might have to go about this creatively, which also, when I hear the word creatively, that's thinking outside the box, which means outside the black and white, in between, in the kind of doing the work um, to fill things out, not just the physical, if that makes sense. Um, it says, like talking during a movie, you may have missed the parts you were asking about while talking. Practice your focus so that you don't miss messages popping up around you. Give me a sign. Oh, I already read that. Okay. So that is where we're at right here. Okay. So let's go to revelry here. And this is um, where it's headed or what you want, what can be accomplished here. Um, let's see. What can be accomplished here? Revelry. And this is the otter. I love the otter energy. It's fun. It's playful. It's lighthearted. Um, there's a lot with the otter. Um, they also... Uh, warm and fuzzy. Fuzzy and adorable. The otter symbolizes the lighter side of life. Yeah, light. It's like there's a need to like... Feels like with strain here, um, there could you could be under a lot of stress and trying to figure out a way to be less stressed out, feel less strain in your life, maybe in a relationship, maybe in a situation, maybe within yourself. But this is coming in. Um, but there's a need to take an opportunity. Listen to some messages. Could be guiding you in the direction here of doing something um, to lighten up that's creative and fun. Um, or outside of what you normally would do or yeah it's kind of feeling like that it says revel in joy and celebration how do you have fun do you make time to relax and just enjoy life the otter has the densest fur of any animal a necessary adaption to their survival this thick layer of fur keeps out the cold waters they float through in fact grooming their fur is such a big job it takes a majority of their time what are you grooming habits that keep the cold water out how do you create revelry and let off steam when you're feeling burnt out um I think that's what you're contemplating right now is how do I stop fit? Maybe if this is, this is what's coming through, there could be a lot of stress or, and you're really, maybe you think you are calming and trying to take strain off of something here. Um, maybe by not speaking about something also or speaking about something, but there's something here you can do a little more lighthearted or move into a more like flowy energy rather than trying to control, um, or, or maybe even, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Yeah, like it's like uh, um, avoid strain, control strain. That's been a message for these this these readings too, you guys. Is there's this feeling of um, 
not resisting even uncomfortable feelings, um, embracing them and seeing what messages we can get from those within ourselves. Going really, really deep here with this energy that's been coming through. Um, what better way to revel in fun? This one, this section is called floating along. Um, then with the people you like the most, the otter does a lot of floating and to ensure they don't drift away from their friends while they kick back and relax, they link up and create a floating otter raft. What is cuter than that? Throw a party, go to an event or just invite some friends over. Being social is a positive force in your life right now. Any opportunity to link up with others and float along will keep you sane when the stress builds up. I feel like that's what you're trying to do here. And if you've been asking spirit for help or messages or guidance because you're like, I'm so stressed out. I need to relax. I need to um, sing. These messages are coming in for you um, right now. And it's also saying, you know, if you've been keeping to yourself to avoid um, more stress or more things in your life piling up on you. There might be an opportunity here that requires you to get past that blockage to creatively step outside that box or that black and white and see the whole thing. And that might be something you need. Also with the otter, I know overindulgence, overindulgence is one of those things to be aware of. Um, it can be, you can overdo it, over um, be trying to numb in order not to have strain. So this takes me into, and if you've been with my channel, you know, I've struggled with addiction myself and anything like that. So if this, um, and if it's not, this part doesn't apply to you, just leave it at the door. It could help somebody. But I know when we don't want to feel strain, sometimes um, we will fall into over, overindulgence, over um, maybe taking um, you know, drugs or eating or shopping, you know, so this is a fine line between, and I feel like I feel like this, there's a creative way, maybe just getting around a couple friends or joining up with um, a creative group or a creative project, maybe just doing a creative project. Um, exercising your creativity could help you through this. But, or And this could require you go get something or go to a group or uh, this could be anything, you guys. But it's feeling like you might be staying to yourself, um, kind of to thinking this is by me staying to myself, I'm avoiding any more strain on me, my relationship, whatever this is, um, my situation, but it's saying time to get out there, go with the flow. If you get an invitation or you have an opportunity to go somewhere or see a movie or anything like that, it could spark something in you. It could bring something good, a good energy in for you. And if you've been asking for that, um, there is, there is signs and synchronicities and messages here. Um, or you could even receive this from an actual person to you guys. Um, any opportunity to link up with others and float along will keep you sane when your stress builds up. The otter is the encouragement to revel in and be thankful for those you love and enjoy spending time with. Don't float alone. So you may need to reach out, talk to somebody even, and this could really lighten up your mood, take some strain off your back. Um, you know, it's feeling like there's a multitude of messages I'm getting here. So take what's yours and leave what's not. But overkill is the last one. And this one's the one um, I know for sure is... Uh, about the overindulgence. And it says the otter uh, warns not to take parting and having fun too far. Don't ruin a good thing. This animal, though cute, can go on hunting sprees where it kills far more than it actually eats. So if you are going to do something or maybe um, invest in something, don't overkill. Just get get the basics um, or just go out for um, one drink if you drink. Um, I don't drink, but if you do drink, you know, don't overindulge. Um, don't don't go out five nights a week just because, you know, oh, I'm supposed to be enjoying time with friends and I'm supposed to be out socializing. Well, it's saying everything in moderation, you guys, um, including all that. It's good to have our, but this is feeling like there's something here coming in to help float you along, help relax you, um, maybe bring some camaraderie or ca ca um, collaboration, maybe friendships, maybe groups, maybe just um, talking to somebody or listening to somebody because messages is about receiving messages too. And this could just be with your higher self too. Um, so true magic occurs when you can create a good flow between the two, um, healthy balance between work and play um, is what this is talking about. Allocating days for fun and for responsibility can help in striking this delicate balance in your life. So find those you love, find those you care about that can support you like the little otter here. And there might even be that coming in and it's saying, take the opportunity maybe um, to get that extra bit of 
like I said, like that camaraderie, that help or that support, um, especially if you've been feeling strained, which is in the strong area. It does, sh it does feel like you're trying not to strain, not to stress, but this could really help, especially if you've been asking for um, a way to feel less less heavy or strained um, to lighten up, okay? Um, do something creative, get with a friend, talk, maybe listen if somebody's trying to talk to you or trying to bring you messages. Um, be open, okay? The ecosystem is the great white, the hermit, and the toad. Um, the great white says this fearsome predator of the otter asks you to prevent getting stuck in the mud. Remember what your true power that your true power will flourish when you are cared for. Taking time to engage in revelry will provide you the downtime you need to level up. And the hermit is let your sanctuary be a place of joy and celebration. If you are des if you are in desperate need of revelry, don't feel guilty for putting on pajamas and turning on some TV. The toad. This praise says that when revelry is taken too far, it can lead to greed and debauchery. And this can be um, too much trash in your life, too much um, overindulgence, too much um, shopping, too much eating, too much partying, too much of anything, you guys, too much. Um, watch how you spend and be wary of online shopping binges and spa days in the name of self-care. Yeah, so if you're saying, oh, I need this new outfit because I need to feel better about myself, or I need this, I need this, I need this. It's saying there's a creative way. Be creative um, about this. There could be messages coming in. You could be even getting messages like, no, you don't need that um, extra piece of pizza. Or no, you don't need that um, outfit. Or no, you don't need that face lotion. Or whatever it is, you guys. Um, it's really finding something. It's finding that spark within yourself. And maybe the closest people to you. Your closest friendships or relationships. And getting that from them instead of something um that's just temporary, it takes temporary strain off your back. Okay. That's another message coming through. TikTok on the clock, but the party don't stop. Kesha and TikTok sings that. Um, can't say I know that, but some of you might. Okay. So the first step here is that creativity. And this is the first step to getting on path, staying on path, whatever it is, you guys. Um, it's the scarab beetle. And it's diverse portfolio is the first um, section for this card. And it says the scarab is hard to stick into a box. This insect can come in one of over 30,000 species. Each species is unique in appearance, color, behavior, and pretty much everything. Your current situation requires you to be creative, to be a little outside the box. That's what I was feeling. Don't worry so much about doing things correctly. Redirect your attention towards being creative. Diversity is key to being a creative person. Without exposure to new and unique people, I was feeling this. Um, experiences and places. Yeah, you may want to be getting in a group, some kind of um, support group, or it could be just a club. It could be a youth group. It could be whatever, the, the whatever, whatever groups, hobbies, stuff like that I'm feeling. Um, it could really help or just doing something different, a different hobby, Pick it, reading about something new, studying something different and starting something new and different that's kind of maybe outside the box. Um, diversity is key to being a creative person. Without exposure to new and unique people, experience, places, etc., you won't have the creative tools you need because other things outside of our box can help um, ignite different sparks within ourselves. And this was part of what I've been going down to is about these rays. And each, each thing brings a different energy, you know? So it's something maybe with a little different energy than you're used to. Um, Consider taking time to add colors and brushes to your toolbox. Creativity isn't, and that just means more tools um, when it's saying that. Now, if you literally um, color or, and I know coloring is very therapeutic, but, or paint, it says, you know, maybe buy a new palette or um, new brushes, um, but don't overdo it. Or it's, it's also saying just new tools, new energy. New energy can help bring up that creativity, friends. Um, maybe talking to somebody, maybe uh, listening to somebody you wouldn't normally um, take the opportunity in the soft spot to listen to because you might see their advice or you might even see them as no, like the hyena is about um, things not being digestible, but the hyena can digest just about anything. But also it's about not overlooking opportunities because they don't look desirable or they don't look like something. Um, so if this is regarding work or something like that or anything like that, there might be an opportunity here to in, 
introduce you to others and you're like, no, I don't want to take that on or this, this role because it's going to cause me more stress. But there is something here. There's an opportunity to actually um, have a little more, uh, it's help, help lighten, lighten things up is what I'm feeling. But the hyena doesn't turn down anything, you know, um, this is in the soft spot. So it's saying you might, may turn down a lot of opportunities to um, share messages or share communication with others or receive information and communication from between what you're just seeing, like as black or white or that's good or that's bad. There could be something here also with the communication coming in. Um, and this is just coming through like where you may say, I, why would I take advice from, you know, that person or that person? They've done this or this. And that's black and white thinking, you guys. There's stuff in between that. Get what's coming in between the black and white too. So that is stepping outside of the box also. So it could be do, to do solely with communication. But I'm also feeling that hobby or that, that um, but it's also coming through strongly in this part. Um, and like I said, there's different parts to this as being open to messages from even um, things that you normally wouldn't uh, think about reading or think about listening to or, yeah, gaining gaining tools. Um, so here we got, uh, it says, creativity isn't just fundamental for artists. It is essential to all lifestyles, careers, and hobbies. Creativity is problem solving. And this is problem solving in a creative way, finding something healthy and balanced to help you take some strain off of your situation or off of your self. Um, the scarab is a sign that to solve your problems, you must feed your creativity. So there's something feeling kind of um, like it's like spirits trying to say this stagnation can be unstagnated and you can go with the flow and lighten up and have more fun by being creative, finding that creative outlet or that creative conversation or that conversation that's kind of outside the box or whatever. You know, there's something that can help release some um, energy that maybe you're trying to do on your own, maybe, um, and it's causing some strain, um, but you're, you know, uh, hanging in there or whatever. It says, the next section is, it's the shit. <laughs> One species of the scarab, the dung beetle, enjoys the most, enjoys what most of us don't, man manure. In fact, they love it so much that they like to bury it, bury it, roll it up into a ball, even live in it. While that may seem a little crazy, being creative means being a little crazy. Manure creates fertility and bounty by replenishing the earth's soil. This card asks you to venture to a place that's a bit off the beaten path. Abundance will come through creating something new and going to that place that seems unexpected. You are being called to see what's possible, not what's real. Chase an idea or follow a passion. This card pushes you to see beyond your current reality. It asks that you take off your apron and get a little messy with your paint. Um, it's really saying to venture into those things that you don't think maybe would help or um, maybe you like, ah, I don't, don't want to learn more about that or I don't need to know more about that. Um, but there's something here saying like it might just be saying, yeah, pay attention to this a little more or look at this a little more. And it's asking you to go ahead and roll with it. And you might even think like that seems like crappy. Like I don't want to be a part of that. Like I don't need more stress in my life. I don't need to be around that that um, undesirable whatever it could feel like it could feel like something even like it looks one way, but it's going to it's a different energy than what it looks. It's like something that looks like or you just prejudged it in a black or white um, has more to offer. That's what I'm getting. Um, and then the next section is disease control. This little beetle's ability to get down and dirty in the mud doesn't just give it a place to live. It provides a very important service by contributing to the health and pastures and of pastures and livestock. By burying waste in the soil, the scarab reduces instances of parasitic activity. Creativity is an imperative control agent in your life. I was feeling that. Keeping yourself healthy doesn't just consist of eating vegetables and drinking enough water every day. Creativity is vital to your health and happiness. This is what I'm feeling the most. Um, <coughs> This card arrives when you need a little creativity boost. If you are feeling unhappy, unhealthy, or stagnant, you need to create some turnover. Focus on creating the life you want to live. So this is refocusing your energy where you may feel like you're not, you may be looking at everything in a black or white way and it may be causing you to not be able to go with the flow of the energy and fill in between and know that um, there's opportunity there. It's not just bad, it's not just good, but there's lots of stuff in between to gather, if that makes sense. 
Um, focus on creating the life you want to live. So this is also about having positive um, thoughts, positive um, hopes, wishes, goals. How can you do this? Creativity thrives when we ask questions. Dig deeper. So these could be this could be something within also um, where it's we need to open our eyes to see things we walk past every day. Something that's right there in front of you could be offering some kind of opportunity to help you lighten up. Somebody could even be trying to get you to lighten up. Or you could be like, I'm not like closing yourself off to something here that is offering you the opportunity to see something different, experience something different, maybe bring some cre creative spark back into your life or something. You could be totally shutting the door to something. Um, that's another message I'm getting. Ecosystem is the bat and the garden snail. Now, this is the second card the bat has been in the ecosystem. So this is pretty important. It says, intuition feeds our creativity more than almost anything else. Put your rational mind on the shelf and allow yourself to be guided by your inspirations and instincts. You know, I've learned to kind of do this um, as long as it's healthy. You know, I'm not going to, um, but but I know the difference between like, uh, like my ego or my, that part of me that wants to like numb or run or n whatever it is. And the part of me that's actually being guided the soul. Like there's a, there's a difference, you know, it's when we want to tell ourselves something, but that's just so we are right or so we are not wrong or whatever it is, or it's a big argument. There's not really an argument when you are actually kind of going with your soul or your spirit. Um, when you're really being strongly, like, I know this is, um, it's just, you'll, you'll, there's a thing, there's a feeling of like knowing something as long as you pay attention to it and take the opportunity to see between the black and white, think outside of the box, um, and take the opportunity, no matter what your thinking, um, personality says about it. Cause we have personality and then we have our spirit. It's just very interesting. I've been reading a book, um, and this has all been one long, um, learning more, you know, I'm constantly being taught by, by the, by the, my guides to learn more and go deeper, go deeper, go deeper. And there's a lot, there's a lot about our personalities and how they need to, um, our souls are really trying to get our personalities to do their will. Basically our souls will not our personalities will. And this is where like this, it's a lot, you guys, um, it's a good book. It's, uh, not all the way through it yet, but it's called Shine Forth. So just so you know, if you want to check out that book. Um, but it's just, there's a lot here. There's, this could go several different ways, you guys, but I am getting that. Um, this bat, it's something intuitively. That it's like you're going to have to not let the personality get in the way. Whether that's the personality of another or the personality of yourself. That's another message. Um, the garden snail is the next one and it says creativity cannot thrive in isolation. I was feeling this. If it does, how will anyone know you have created something wonderful if you don't share it with those around you? You could be, have some really good news or you could have something you want to communicate, um, something you've learned or something you've seen that you might want to be sharing with somebody, but you're not taking that opportunity. And it says if a tree falls in the forest and no one is around to witness did it even make a sound share your creative talents with the world you may be wanting to maybe take that um po poem or whatever to an open read or that art piece to a gallery or whatever it is you guys it's saying step outside the box here and there i did feel that with this strain in the i and i felt like isolation so uh, be mindful of who you're surrounding yourself with but i would say a little less um skeptical about the what you have to gain from it because there is something here for you to gain um we don't read and write poetry because it's cute we read and write poetry because we are members of the human race and i myself love poetry and write poetry so robin williams dead poet society um so i understand this is it comes from that that place that emotional place that place that um we need to sift through and sort through in order for it not to get in the way of what our souls are trying to do. So emotions can be very, very um, heavy and they can be very, very dense. And when, when we really take the time to realize that that's just what it is, it's our, it's, it's, it's very interesting. <laughs> we are not here to be um, always feeling about everything. Although there's great love in wanting things to work and be peaceful and, um, healed and there's all this work that goes into like um, not being unbalanced you know um, 
and that's in what you do and how you perceive things, um, how you receive things, how you communicate things, all of it, you guys. So that's just a little side message. Let's go ahead and go down here to the strain, the yak, which is in the strong position. So there is, um, it looks like you're trying to, because it did come in reverse, you could be really trying to relax or trying to take strain off of something, yourself, a situation, relationship, whatever this is. Um, but it's also feeling like um, there's something else here that you may be not doing, like stepping outside of a box of some sort or black and white thinking or something that could help take some strain off. And this could be about a group or a partnership or a hobby or a book or anything, you guys. It's open, open general message. But let's go to the yak. Here we go. Ugh, strain. You could be not wanting to put strain on um, yourself or another or, you know, this is very interesting. Beasts of burden is the first section. The yak is a domesticated animal whose diligent persistence and robust frame has served the people of Tibet for thousands of years. From providing meat to milk to even fuel, the yak can do it. This animal enters your reading when you have been working hard but may be strained under the weight of your obligations. You have committed to and signed up for too much. In trying to juggle a million things, you may have bitten off more than you can chew. You cannot be all things to all people. As pressure builds and stress piles up, ask yourself, when is it just too much? The yak's appearance in your reading insists that you stop once in a while and take a break. And this could be needing to take a break to do something creative for yourself or do something that you enjoy. Read a book, do some, write a poem, paint, um, dance, whatever it is. Um, uh, that's the first section. The next one's moving mountains. The yak can climb higher than any other animal in the world. Their ability to withstand extreme altitudes along the Himalayan mountains is an impressive feat. Climbing to serve heights, they must be equipped to endure freezing temperatures. This is the second time this cold has come in. Came in with the otter also, about staying warm and fuzzy um, and comforted, even when the environment may not be as comforting as, um, it's like creating, uh, doing something creatively, thinking about it differently, maybe to make it more comfortable. Um, you know, I'm a big believer in mind over matter too, but there's also things you can do in your environment to make them more comfortable, like your hobby or read a book or, you know, it's, in, it's, that's another message coming through. Um, it says climbing to severe heights, they must be equipped to endure freezing temperatures that can reach up to 40 below zero. You are durable, capable, and can, and can keep going as long as you care for yourself along the way. And it, and you know, this is about taking care of yourself, about your spirit too. And it may require that you sh sh shake up your, uh, um, schedule or your, um, even your responsibilities a little and take a break and do something creative and do something outside the box. Maybe you have a, uh, yeah, there's something, the messages are here. So there, there's something definitely going to come through people or your guides guiding you to just step outside this box or this black or white to calm you. And it's going to bring you more peace and it's going to bring you more warmth. Um, even if it's just looking at something different, looking at something in a creative way, that's the next step, you guys. So let's go ahead and read. If you feel strained at the base of the mountain, how will you ever make it to the top? Consider that you may need to pack lighter before make you make your ascent. This could be about releasing some things too. Taking This is like kind of Ten of Wands energy. Um, it's like releasing some burdens, releasing some ways of thinking or some actual things in your life. Um, maybe thoughts about um, just... Like, well, you'll you'll hear it when we get to the hyena, but it's there. There's this energy. Um, to get to the top of mountains, oh, you will need to develop endurance and perseverance because you're at the beginning of something here, and it's just um, you're just. It feels like um, you need that extra burst of energy to get through the end here. That's what I'm getting. Um, breakthrough is the next section. It says the yak is an indication that what you are searching for won't come easy. And it may be a strain to get it. And that's this, I feel like that, like this friendship. I'm also getting like three of cups energy here, like friendship, camaraderie, celebration, something really good, happy, easygoing, light, um, hearted. And it's going to require some work here and probably on your part too. But you have to release things in order to work on other things. Because if we're to so busy working on um, the normal things that we work on in the box, we can't work on the things outside of the box, the things that we know we intuitively 
need to work on it. That's another message coming through. Um, the yak's frozen habitat often buries the plants and vegetation they need to survive under mounds of snow and ice. To get their food, they must use their horns to chisel through. It is just when we catch sight of the finish line that exhaustion can begin to set in. The yak is a signal that you are closer to your goal than you realize. Break through your final obstacles and fight the temptation to fizzle out. Muster your willpower so that you don't collapse right at the very end. Yes, there's something here trying to, this feels like an encouraging message um, for whoever this is resonating with to, to get through this, kind of maybe get this extra burst of energy, get out of the stagnation. There's just a little push needed here to step outside your box a little, see a little more of the in-between or receive a little more of the information or communicate um, or take that opportunity that maybe you've been putting off or putting down um, to really bring a new spark in here, a new oomph um, to get through this ending of whatever process or situation this is. The ecosystem is the pack and the air and earth. The pack, if the strain caused by your current situation becomes too much, turn to your tribe for support. I am feeling that your closest loved ones. Um, this could be you maybe have shut the door on taking the opportunity to um, receive messages from those you love or just hang out and be lighthearted with them. Um, there's a feeling here of needing to be a little more lighthearted because um, it feels heavy and, you know, painting or hobbying or reading or um, just stepping outside the black and white or the box can be a lot, lift a lot of weight off your shoulders from the rigid schedule or the rigid thinking or the rigid whatever. Um, the yak's frozen habitat. Oh, oh I did read that. Um, oh, the pack. That's where I was. Sorry. Could the problem be that you are attempting to do it all alone? Is it time to delegate some of the weight to others? Failing to trust yeah, this could be a control thing too. I was feeling that with the yak and the control. You could be trying to control everything or take on everything because you're the only one that knows how to do it or whatever. Um, but there's an opportunity here to rely or trust someone or something here to, to take a load off you. And that's another message coming through for some. And it could be, like I said, this is general, but that could help somebody. Mountain climbers uh, failing to trust and not accepting help will ultimately lead to your defeat. No one accomplishes anything alone. Air and earth. The yak is an herbivore requiring the earth for nourishment. But at the top of the mountain where oxygen in the air dips low, pickings grow slim. Mountain climbers without enough oxygen become delirious. If you start to feel burnout, don't succumb to distraction and escape. That was a message too with the otter. So just try not to escape right now. Really get in there. Get in there deeper. Get in there and get in there and read between the lines or feel the messages coming in for you right now. If you um, ground yourself back to your body, if you've kind of disassociated with things um, that can to, to take the strain off, that's still disassociation and it's still dis, um, disconnecting from something here that has opportunity and messages in it for you. That's another message you guys. So um, if you start to, so, and, and I, I've done this in my life too, is that disassociation. It's like dis, it's, but there's also tapping in and really being there. And that, that's been a message through these readings. It's like staying even in like, if it's uncomfortable to get us outside of our box or uncomfortable to take that, um, conversation or that opportunity, um, to do something that it's like, no, you know, we have to really, Go with our intuition on this and not our personality because that's what we're trying to um, utilize. We're trying to utilize our personality for higher good or more positivity in our lives, not to keep us trapped or strained or um, narrow-minded or judgmental. You know, these are the things we're trying to work on um, in this, in this, on this path. Um, so it says, activities that take you out of your head, like exercise, cleaning, and cooking, are good ways to regain your footing. Yeah, this could be taking a cooking class, maybe um, looking up a recipe, um, cooking with somebody you love, and having a good a good meal and talk, or something like that. You know, there's something here. You could be being invited to do that or something, and don't turn down the opportunity to do something more lighthearted and fun here that's kind of outside the box right now. And it doesn't mean this is outside your complete box or when it be available to you. It just might feel a little, um, maybe a little straining or a little awkward, especially if you haven't been out for a while or you haven't cooked for a while or you haven't read for a while or whatever it is, you guys. Don't fret, Femme. 
things are never as bad as they seem. And that is the yak here. Miss Maudie to kill a mockingbird. All right. And let's go to this weak spot, which is this hyena energy, you guys. And it's the opportunity. And we're going to read that, okay? These have been about an hour long, so I appreciate you guys staying and watching your reading. There is a lot of good messages coming through this round of readings. Um, a lot of things being asked to look at here. Um, this is the decks I was guided to, and there is a lot. There's a lot of information, a lot of reading, and a lot of scenarios, so there's a lot of messages in here. Um, hey, it says, who you know. Hey, the hyena is a social creature living in hierarchical clans that can have up to 80 members. They know the value of being surrounded by others. Opportunity is rarely a matter of pure chance. It is something sparked and fueled by engaged perseverance and ready engagement. Be ready for an opportunity. Be ready to be engaged in something that you're, you may initially go, no, I don't want to be engaged in that or I don't want to do that because I'm tired or I want to sleep or, you know, I want to escape or I want to just like not be, you know, there's a feeling here of feeling really overburdened and shutting, shutting out, shutting down. Um, and it's at, it's really strongly coming in and saying, don't engage, be ready, be ready for that spark to be lit up again. Um, this card says that there is opportunities waiting for you. Hurry and take advantage of them. They won't stick around waiting for you forever. Excuse me. Aligning yourself with others who share your interests, passions, and ideas will take you twice as far. Look around you, not just for opportunities, but to notice where you are and who you're with. I was feeling that, like, um, be mindful of who you're around, what the energies, the between the lines, too. If there's something, you know, maybe go do something or be around completely different people than you're used to being around. If you're feeling that energy get stagnant or you're feeling maybe negativity or you're feeling like it's putting more weight on your back or something like that, do something for you, do something that's different. Do something outside of the box. There's something here. Leftovers is the next section. The hyena knows that it isn't always about how hard you work. This animal hunts. But when free dinner presents itself, they aren't picky. Um, not being picky, not turning down opportunities, or um, this could even be food, literally. But not not taking, you know, not thinking that um, what you have right there in front of you isn't, um, doesn't have opportunity to bring you happiness or or you can't trust it or it can't take no weight off of you because there is something here um that could be available for whoever this part of the message is resonating with that can help lighten you up to help, help take a load off and you may not be taking that opportunity you may be being um like i was feeling like black or white or rigid or something like that um he is always ready and on the lookout for an opportunity in the unforgiving desert especially if things are feeling stagnant or um really like things ain't moving it's like time to really look and see the opportunity in what's being offered in the messages in the synchronicities in your environment for you to utilize to help you get that spark and create the life you want okay that's another message he is always ready on the lookout for opportunity this guide presents itself when you have zoomed in a little too close you may be too close to a situation to see it for its worth there may be value in something that you're not saying value in um, I was getting that. Um, what if new and fresh opportunity looks like a leftover? Um, or it's like, ah, I don't want that because, you know, uh, it just doesn't look good to me. Or, it, you know, you already have this idea that it's not for you. Um, it's for somebody else. That hyena, the hyena calls for your openness and willingness to consider all things. Take all the opportunities that come your way. Don't narrow your field of view. I also, with the hawk that was in there too, is getting that full spectrum. So seeing the full spectrum of something here or somebody or situation or opportunity here that you may not, you may only be seeing a fragment of it and there's more to be valued or offered or that can help you right now in that situation or whatever this is speaking about. Um, what if what you need comes disguised? And that means it could come in looking like, man, this this is not something I want to be a part of. This isn't something I want to read. This isn't something I want to listen to. This isn't somebody I want to hang around or this isn't a group I'd get into or this isn't something I want to do right now. I already got this schedule. I already got this like rigid thing going on and I can't step outside my box. I can't, you know, it's saying do that. Step outside the box. Um, the next section is skin and bones. What allows the hyena to be such a fantastic opportunist? Scavenging is easy when you are equipped with unique ability to digest pretty much anything, even bones. As a result, this animal can make a meal go a long way. You are being pushed to do more, see more, try more, and expose yourself to as much as possible. 
that is really saying to me, go deeper, dig deeper, even if it's uncomfortable, even if it's like, no, I don't want to do that, or I can't do that right now, or um, I can't put another thing on my plate, I can't look at another thing, I can't, there's something here, That you absolutely have the capability to do, even if you feel like it, you can't. That's that black and white thinking. Um, yeah, it says when you take it to find out what you need, you must first know what you don't. Opportunities are all around you. When you take advantage of them, you will keep finding more. The opportunities to see something differently. The opportunities to receive those messages or think in between the lines, not just the lines or the opportunity to let somebody else do something to help you or take a load off your back or uh, eat dinner or whatever, do something different. It's just feeling really um, like needing to relax, needing to lighten up and needing in order to do that, needing to step outside the normal, um, your normal routine or your normal thinking. And this is going to, it's saying you have the opportunity, they're all around you. Um, but maybe you're not seeing them because you're seeing something in like a black and white. Um, so you're not seeing the opportunity that's right there in front of you, offering you a lot of different ways to see something or experience something. Um, opportunity available. Do you know that just because something is easy to digest, that doesn't mean it will provide you nourishment. This is also where the overindulgence or the, um, this is where you have to be mindful and know the difference because you could be thinking, oh, I want that. And it could be just, um, that's easier. Oh, I, this is, so it's like being in a room of people that tell you everything you want to hear, which would not, it would be easy to digest that because that's easy for the personality to understand and take. What's not easy is when somebody tells you something um, that you don't want to hear or you don't want to reflect on, or you don't want to see the in-between on, and that would be harder to digest. So that's another message here is if like no i know what this um you know there's a feeling here it says it can it's not this is a message it's like it's like when i give up when i gave up meat um well red meat i'm working on i'm still doing turkey and chicken but um i gave up red meat two months and i didn't realize because that was really the only meat i really ate because i'm not a chicken eater or turkey eater except for on thanksgiving and i'm like oh and if two months i was like starving i felt starving you guys um and i found that i was like oh i want a cheeseburger or i want but I was like, no, I don't. I don't want to. I don't want to eat a cheeseburger. I want the protein. I want what the cheeseburger can give me, can offer me for my nourishment. So it's about also discerning between what you want and what you need. Is there something you need right in front of you that you may be closing the door to because you want something that's more easy to digest or you want something that's... Um, less requires less of you to maybe step outside your box or... Um, and that's just another message, you guys. There's a lot in this. So definitely that's something to keep in mind. And if you're doing shadow work, in which these have had some shadow work in them, this should not, I always say this, if it triggers you, there's something there for you to work on. If it doesn't trigger you, you're already doing the work and good job. Keep it up. The hardest decision is the most important and the scariest option is often the one we need. The one that makes you go, no, that's just not, that's just not. It's going to make me uncomfortable or it's, it's going to put one more thing on my plate or I don't have time or energy to dig right now or do this or, you know, there's something here. Let's see. The ecosystem for this card is the lion. The lion and the hyena form a rivalry in African desert, competing fiercely over the same prey. Even when no opportunity for kill is present, they have been known to attack each other. Opportunity often involves competition. It takes a great deal of bravery to stand your ground when you want something. This prey is a reminder not to back away just because you aren't the only one on the field. Use competition as an opportunity to be brave and to grow and to test yourself. I love that. So if there's something you're like, no, you know, I don't want to do that because there's other better uh, riders or there's, or, or you, you're feeling like compared or something, don't compare yourself to others. That's always very important for you. Just do what you do. And um, if that's why you're worried about being in a group or maybe contributing to something or, you know, there's a very... Be brave to grow, okay? Opportunity is here to be brave and grow. This bravery might require that you communicate or step outside of a certain perception or a certain schedule or a certain um, idea of what is not an opportunity and what is. Um, that, that's what I'm feeling. The rhino. Don't let fear prevent you from taking opportunities. Fear can manifest in our lives in ways we aren't always cognizant 
cognizant of. When something scares us, our reaction can be to dismiss it and to alter our perception of things to make it less unsettling, to make it more easy to digest. Um, it's like, okay, so if I, um, it's like, if something scares me, I'm just like, nope, automatic dismission. Instead of going in and asking myself, why? Why does it scare me? And then answering all those questions for myself. Um, not to dismiss something just because it might be hard to look at or hard to chew on or hard to digest because that's nourishment. That's what's growing you. That's what's teaching you. That's what's helping you step outside of your comfort zones and your boxes and helping you get out of stagnation and strain. Um, be sure that you aren't talking yourself out of an opportunity that could change your life. My mother always said, if you want something, you're going to have to work hard and take advantage of every opportunity. And that's Jane Goodall as the quote for that. That is a nice reading, you guys. So I hope this is helping somebody. Um, we are going to get another animal card from the Kim Cran's Wild Unknown Animal deck. And then I'm going to get a Oracle of Light. Um, white Light Oracle. We got the raccoon. It did come in reverse. We're going to read that. See what raccoon has. It's an earth energy, you guys. This is about opportunity, too, I believe. Um... Raccoon is an opportunist, but it's also um, Creature of the Night, too. Let's see here. And these are pretty short, you guys. Let's see where it is. Where is that raccoon? There we go. Talented, shadowy, and in hiding. Oh, you could be hiding, like coming out, showing yourself, talking, communicating, sharing, sharing an opportunity with close loved ones, friends, um, or a group. Like I said, um, that is the card coming out. It says raccoon energy is at play within all artists to greater or lesser degrees. At best, it indicates talent, tenacity, and skillfulness with a particular musical instrument or creative tool. Yes, this is feeling very, like a very creative reading. Like there's something really creative you can do here to help um, you lighten up and, and engage and take opportunity. It's interesting. Um, its shadow side points to an unresolved issue around self-image and success. Sometimes using a stage name or wearing a mask works in an artist's favor. Other times it limits creativity. I, am I who my audience thinks I am? What if I am ready to grow into something more, you know, more than the mask, more than the personality? Um, yeah, that's interesting. Raccoon energy won't let us off the hook until this creative ego fear is resolved. It's releasing that mask. It's really being who you are. And it's really following what, um, stepping into that in between unknown of what you know to be your personality or your schedule or your whatever this is, you know, there's something definitely about stepping outside the box here. When in balance, generous friend and exceptional artist. When out of balance, competitive and a starving artist. To bring into balance, make new work. Create something. All right, let's go ahead and get a white light oracle. Whoa, right away, guys. Oh, I love this. The Pearl of Sorrow. The Pearl Energy came through in the last round of readings, and it has been coming through. So um, this is that building up. This is, to me... The pearl energy is always about building up something. You can see there's like this, feels like there's this building up, building up. Um, it feels very magician-y or manifesty, but there's also this. It says, taking responsibility for your experiences empowers you. You are going to resolve an issue through spiritual inspiration and higher guidance, the messages, the creativity. You will rise up in full connection to your spirit and access a wealth of divine treasure. You're going to gain a lot of nourishment from stepping forward out of the the, the box and taking this like ins inspiration and going with it. Um, that which has brought darkness into your world shall submit to the light and be transformed. Yes, transmuting something deep, um, maybe about your personality or your ego or your um, the black and white thinking. I was feeling that in this raccoon with the black and white mask um, and really starting to see a full spectrum of colors available and that are already there. Um, have have courage and commitment to your awakening for you are a precious being and can go far on this spiritual path this lifetime. I love that. Um, in the inner work of self-transformation, we take that which appears negative. This was, I was feeling that perception too. Um, it appears negative and we utilize it to increase our goodness. We increase our goodness. We don't take the goodness away from ourselves because of 
something that we perceive as negative. We grow from it. We learn from it. We shine light on it. We become, um, we, we, we try to heal those things in ourselves that feel negatively about it, like our acceptance or our judgments or our um, shames, fears, guilt, anything like that, you guys, or our idea that something should look a certain way, including ourselves, most importantly. Um, <sighs> we need to take care not to attribute the negativities to divine will that are actually caused by humans. Human beings have free will. Without it, there could be no growth, only a following of rules. For the soul, life is something like a multidimensional art class. A lot of art coming in here. It is allowed to create with absolute freedom, with the understanding that it will be responsible for its creation. So it's really saying, you know, not if something's happening, it's we have free will. You can change. You can recreate something. I was getting that magician energy. You can create something. You can transmute something. You have the power and the opportunity to, to even if it's hard to chew on, even if it's hard work to do it. This feels like in the middle of a very um, strong transformation and encouragement to keep going and doing the work and um, maybe just taking the opportunity to chew on some things that might be a little uncomfortable by stepping out of the box, seeing between the lines, stuff like that. Um, and it, But if... You create something. You create it. So I always say this to this is one of my things. It's like if you, and I didn't realize this until way later in life, but when you take responsibility for your failures, even if you know other people might have been involved, there was other things, but you say, no, nope, well, I made this choice or I did this or, you know, and this is the stuff I can heal in myself so that I I, I create something different for myself now because we have the power now um, as we realize and we wake up to that, then we get that victory too because we're doing it ourselves um and we know what we need to work on when we take responsibility in our lives um it's not god's fault it's not people's fault we are all people we are we've all made bad choices we've all made great choices we all are working on what we're working on but allowing that negativity to consume you or take over or put strain on you can really um shadow your perception of all that's available to you in the moment and all the opportunities um, that are there for you to grow, to evolve. Um, a lot, a lot here, guys. Big message. Without it, there could be no growth, only the following of rules. It is allowed to create an absolute freedom with the understanding it will be responsible for its creation. So know that what you're creating is your responsibility um, and be mindful of what you're creating and be mindful of if, if it's... Um, stepping outside your box or staying in your box, whatever that is, you guys, um, there's a lot here. That opens the path for truly beautiful and blessed offerings to the collective. It also opens the path to expression of free will that creates suffering. So it goes either way. It can create suffering or it can offer blessings and healing and good things. You can offer positivity or you can offer negativity, but that is your creation. And that is what this card's really speaking about. Um, and trust by taking responsibility for your experience. It doesn't mean you're taking responsibility for everybody's crap. It means you're taking responsibility for your experience, your perception. And is there things you can change to change the experience or see the opportunity? Um, there is a lot here about that in between. Um, whether our choices create liberation or enslavement to pain is the responsibility of human beings. This body, and that is not the divine, that is us. We need to do that work. This body has been given to us that we may learn and grow spiritually. We are all in that process, varying in our capacities and awareness, but ultimately progressing together. If some members of our human family are in such pain, they can only create further pain. That is their choice. As a group, we work to heal the causes of that pain to free them. And that is what, you know, um, it is. It's about those, and that's what I, why I do what I do. It's like all those pains of like all those emotions. Emotions cause a lot of pains and the way we feel. And it's like, yeah, those feelings were there, but how are we handling those today? And how did we handle them then? And did it hurt me worse? Did it make my life worse? <laughs> you know, then I take responsibility for when it made my life worse. But now I can take responsibility because it's, it's better because I'm seeing it differently. I'm seeing it as... Um, everything has worth and value, even negative things in our lives, you guys. So um, taking that into the spectrum um, helps a lot. Uh, when rare and precious members of our family develop such luminous awareness that exuding light, they call us into greater peace and happiness than those of us who are able to receive and share what they offer, do so for the benefit of all. I love that. 
So there could be people in your group, your family, that can offer this awareness and this light um, for you. And it and it's calling you to greater peace, greater peace in your life, greater peace, greater healing, and just the opportunities available for the, that are positive. And it really is, there's a lot about perception here with that raccoon and that mask, you know, it's popping out. Um, it's really nice. This is a beautiful reading. Um, yeah, it says, there is those of us who are able to receive. And you could need to shine, receive, and um, receive maybe uh, the offerings or there's something around that's offering you some kind of peace and could benefit or you could do this for others, maybe through a creative endeavor, um, vice versa. You know, there's a lot here. Um, the healing pro process on this is I assume full responsibility for myself and my life path. I call upon in the enlightened heart of the universe to assist me to manifest my divine, my divine potential through grace, mercy, and love for the greatest spiritual benefit of all beings. I love that. This oracle has merged in your reading because you have the capacity to become a light bearer. Safeguard your energy, yet trust that the light within is strong enough to see you through any struggle. Any struggle, even if it's like being able to digest the shadows, being able to digest the darkness and turn it into something positive in your life and be positive. It's really, really strong message here. Safeguard... Uh, Oh, I love this. Um, yet trust that light within is strong enough to see you through any struggle and eventually transform it into a precious pearl of sacred empowerment. You have wisdom in your divinely alchemical heart and you shall arise with dignity. I love that, you guys. So that is your guys' message. I do hope it helped. Tear of Delta on the bottom, you guys. This is that gentleness. I love it. And then we got the frog. And this is, to me, always the frog is like about transformation and shedding the skin, shedding the old skin. Um, I love it. And then we got the opossum, surrender on the bottom of that one, you guys. So that is your guys' reading. I hope it helps somebody. And as always, I appreciate you guys coming and watching your reading. Um, and I appreciate you guys' support. I hope you guys have a good day and I'll talk to you later.